Welcome back to this September 25th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyd, and I'll be taking you through the next uh, few minutes here into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. Uh, let's start by taking a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. On deck tonight, we'll start with a skate upcoming skate park meeting. Uh, there's a moose in downtown Brattleboro, and uh, it's, of course it's Tuesday, which means uh, we get the commons involved here as well. All that and more, we do it in 15 minutes. So uh, if you can, make sure you stick with us uh, right here on 545 Live. So I do believe that um, this is a project that can happen. I do believe that I'll, I'm going to see it happen. I, I do believe that we'll probably see it happen before he's able to skateboard. Welcome back to the September 25th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyd, and that's footage of town manager Barb Sondag at a skate park uh, committee meeting held back in 2010, talking about her hopes and determination in putting that skate park together. Of course, since then, uh, wild controversy has unfolded. They've got an upcoming meeting, though, based uh, mostly on the design, which is why uh, now we're joined by basic committee chair Marty Valander, who's uh, waiting downstairs uh, to talk to us here. Marty, let's start here with uh, this um, meeting that's coming up. Of course, there's lots of controversy, but this is not quite the forum for that. This is more about the design. So uh, let's, let's start there, if, if we can, for a moment. You know, I think that our meeting that's coming up Thursday at the Senior Center is going to be a great planning meeting for us. Um, really what we're looking for there is anybody who's interested in the future of that Kroll Park as a skate park location to give feedback. So we're looking for skaters to come, but we're also looking for people who are interested to give feedback in how the landscaping could, could be adjusted or improved. People who think that benches might be, might be appropriate. And we're really going to make this a community asset. You know, we've been working, Basic showed up for Green Up Vermont Day and painted some of those features, picked up trash and moved, moved dead limbs. And we're really making this a community-wide um, effort to improve the park for the, its long-term uh, use. Well, tell us a little bit about why you feel this project is so important. Uh, the skate park, you know, there was a survey done of uh, Wyndham County and Brattleboro area youth, uh, 2007 if I have my dates correct, and what they stated was, one, that they wanted to be listened to, wanted to be heard by the adult community. Two, that they needed a place to congregate, recreate, um, and socialize. And three, that a perfect place for that would be a skate park. So by building a skate park, we are achieving all three of those goals that the kids identified in that listening project um, suggested was important. All right. Marty Ballander is the chair of Basic Brattleboro Area Skate Park is coming. All right, Reformer Roundup, as I mentioned, Harris Hill, we're going to start right there. And uh, for that, we'll even put a little Harris Hill graphic up as well. A group of Brattleboro locals are in the process of cleaning up the Harris Hill ski jump in preparation for this coming winter. The ski jump, which reopened in 2009 after renovations to bring it up to uh, international ski jump standards, hosted the International Ski Federation Cup Tournament this past February, and will do so again this coming winter. Uh, they've got a website you can find out more at. That's Harris Hill Ski Jump, all in word, dot com. All right, next story, Hill, B-A-B-B, -B, or Building a Better Brattleboro. Uh, their annual meeting will be held on Wednesday, September 26th at 5 p.m. Uh, at the River Garden, uh, where they'll elect their new members. All right. Just a, a brief look at our reformer roundup. You gotta um, check in with them if you wanna find out more about their stories. Reformer.com is the website. Speaking of uh, daily newspapers, let's just jump right back into it. It's Tuesday, perhaps you're watching on Wednesday or Thursday on the rebroadcast. Uh, we go downtown to talk to folks at the Commons about what's uh, coming up in their paper. Of course, it hits newsstands Wednesday. So if you're lucky enough to be watching this on Wednesday or Thursday, you can already pick this up. Let's take a look at what's coming up. Awesome. Uh, they're uh, talking about uh, the Brooks House planning as that uh, continues. Um, they're also going to talk a little bit about the middle school in Bellows Falls and the renovations that are uh, in place there. 
there's uh, some school closings to match a rally, and uh, plenty more stories as well, including their uh, now well-known voices section. Commonsnews.org is that uh, website where we've gleaned that little snapshot for you. All right, we've got a few things to uh, jump back into as we move on here. Uh, and we'll start with Cassandra Geekis, who is the uh, candidate for Democratic candidate for Vermont Lieutenant Governor. Last week, she was in BCTV's downtown studios to talk about her plans should she find herself in office. We've got that clip as well. In 2014, when we walk into the legislature, the hard work of, of research, of policy roadmap, of some consensus building happens before we even walk in that door. And you know, it's not the lieutenant governor's role to, uh, to dictate policy. It's to bring the people together and to do the big picture thinking. Democratic Lieutenant Governor hopeful Cassandra Geekis uh, in our downtown studios last week talking about uh, her upcoming election, her plans should she find herself in office. All right, a few more things uh, before we wrap up here today. I want to talk a little bit about moose. All right. There was a moose in downtown. Here's the script from my new uh, intern, Justin Harris, who's been uh, hard at work looking things up. According to a post on iBrattleboro, there's a moose loose in Brattleboro. The moose was spotted on Pine Street uh, in Brattleboro last Saturday and later seen running past the Latches Theater, hard to believe. Moose antlers are apparently very thick, uh, so the message is to proceed with caution should you encounter that moose yourself. All right. Another one of our stories there next, BCTV's next round of classes is going in. And uh, I'm particularly excited for this because we've added to the roster some advanced classes as well. We'll talk about how to find out more about those first, but uh, here's a sample of some of the materials that you'll be uh, working with should you find yourself in an advanced Final Cut class. Owen Boyden here uh, for our advanced Final Cut class. I'm standing in front of the windows at BCTV. Unfortunately, it just slipped my mind. I forgot to reset the camera after setting it for the studio lights. Let's see what we can do. The, the first thing you're gonna need to do is try and find some white to change this. Good thing we have those, well, I won't say my pasty white skin, but uh, we've got the walls in the background we can use. Just a sample of what you'll be looking at if you join us for classes. Uh, why not take a look at what's uh, the best way to find out about more of this. This is at brattleborotv.org. Um, and we're gonna go right to the learn page here um, where you'll see that there's a classes and workshops tab. Uh, and from there, you'll be able to find out uh, things like our introduction to editing with Final Cut Pro, that advanced editing class I was just mentioning, which includes mastering the tool palette, utilizing color correction like we just saw, chroma keying for green screen, audio tips and tricks, and more. And speaking of upcoming BCTV events you can find on that calendar we were just looking at, BCTV is getting ready to kick off their annual meeting. Um, now, uh, this is where we gather groups together uh, of our various uh, producers, followers. We're going to be at the Brattleboro Museum and Art Center, um, and we're going to put together a list of awards. We're going to award people, we're going to show clips, and then I'm frantically trying to compile a montage, ten, five to ten minute montage of just about everything that's been produced at BCTV in the last year. I'm going to catch you up with a quick look at uh, what happened last year on BCTV. Hi, Peter. Welcome back to town. It's great to be home. It's BCTV's Nightly News Roundup 545 Live. I auditioned for Oprah. That was our grand prize winner. It is Shay Show. Give them a piece of change and continue on my way, praying that one day I can bring real change. Town without pity. They say Brattleboro can turn a good man bad. Well, he's still in the world. We'll move on. Uh, do a few sports things before we uh, get the latest weather from BUHS TV. As of today, the Bellows Falls girls varsity hockey team and the Twin Valley boys soccer team are both undefeated this season. Uh, in their last games, the Bellows Falls Terriers defeated the Slaters 1-0. Twin Valley Wildcats defeated Green Mountain 2-0. Uh, both teams are uh, currently stand at five wins and zero losses on the season. All right, BHS TV's got a morning news advisory program. It shows 10:15 uh, a.m. weekdays, uh, excluding Wednesdays when they take a, a hard, uh, well-deserved uh, work day off after a, a hard week of work. Um, we like to clip into their weather broadcast, uh, get you updated on all the latest. Let's take a look. 
That was awesome. Uh, today's weather is looking sunny with temps rising to the low 70s, winds south, southwest, 10 to 15 miles per hour. For Wednesday, there's a 50% chance of rain, isolated thunderstorms arriving in the afternoon, high temp in the low 70s. That's all for today. Back to the desk. You can catch uh, those broadcasts again, 10, 15 a.m., uh, two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, channel 10, uh, weekday mornings. Uh, speaking of BUHS TV, it's Spirit Week up at BUHS, and they took their act out of that studio into the hallways to uh, interview some colorful folks about B uh, BUHS Spirit Week. You guys are very spiritful, yes? Yeah. You enjoying Spirit Week? Yeah. You excited for any other days in the future of this week? Yeah. And where did you get all of these lovely outfits? Um, right side, side eyes. Awesome. Well, we will see you all at the pep rally this Thursday. Yeah. Thank you. Back to the desk. In this case, it's back to our desk. Uh, that's a full lid for me, so uh, I will say adieu. But uh, if you can, make sure you join us for uh, BCTV's annual meeting, 3rd of uh, October. Starts at 6 p.m. at the Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center across from the co-op uh, there at Malfunction Junction. All right, I'm going to just thank everybody that uh, makes 545 Live tick the way it does, including our new uh, staff writer. Justin Harrison, who's been putting together some clips. Of course, Joe Bushy, my often co-captain, he uh, always as helpful as possible. And uh, in this case, 545 Live content specialist Maria Dominguez for helping me pick out this outfit and uh, then warning me that my collar was a little bit off uh, there earlier. So, all right, thanks to uh, everybody out there. Um, we will see you for our next live broadcast Friday right here on Channel 8, 545 p.m. Night, everybody. Stopping by the advanced editing classroom while I'm voiding a new better color correct this. It might even need to be lightened up. Maybe just maybe you can green screen it. Also, I do dance moves.